I was bored as usual. I was home, on my phone, scrolling through Instagram, TikTok, and every other platform that I could get my hands on. I admit, I was addicted to social media, but how can you blame me? As a millennial, we didn't exactly grow up with it, but we managed to assimilate it into our lives without a problem, and now, it's a part of our daily routine. Hello there, I'm Amber, and I'm 27 years old. I wanted to tell you the story about this bad side of social media. Yes, you heard that right. It does have a bad side and it's worse than you'd ever imagine. So as I was saying, I was bored, scrolling through my phone when I got a friend request on Snapchat. It was a name I never heard of, Jack Tyler. Sounded innocent enough, so I accepted it. After a couple seconds, I got a snap. It was a car sitting in a parking lot. The picture was taken from behind and it was really blurry so I couldn't make out if someone was actually in the car or if it was empty, but I could see that the parking lot was empty. I asked the guy what was with that picture, but I didn't get a response, so I decided to leave it like that. I then got a phone call from my friend, Macy. She had something important to tell me about a guy she went on a date with. She continued telling me that he was a weirdo and that he talked about all these horrible things and so on. She told me that he talked about murders and how he always imagined what it's like to be killed or even to kill. Then Macy began telling me that she lied to him. She told the guy that she got a text from me, even though I didn't text her, and that she had to go because it was an emergency. We both laughed and I told her that there are a lot of weirdos out there. After that, Macy wanted to tell me something. She started out saying the following. So anyway, I'm at, and that's when the call ended. I always assumed that her phone died. I tried calling her back, but it went straight to voicemail. I didn't think anything more about it. I knew how she was. She was always on her phone, and it was normal that she would run out of battery. So I went into the kitchen to make myself some popcorn, and as I was waiting for the last pop, I got a notification on my phone. I thought it was Macy, but it wasn't. The notification was from Snapchat, and when I opened it, I saw that it was from the same guy who sent me the blurry photo of the car. Now it was a blurry photo of something red and the inside of a car. I couldn't make out anything. It was pretty dark and beside the colors, I couldn't see any details. I asked the guy again what was his problem and if we knew each other, but he never replied. So my popcorn was ready, so I closed the app, grabbed a bowl and went into the living room and turned on the TV. I was really in the mood for a romantic comedy and Netflix was my obvious choice. But before I had the chance to open the app, a breaking news story caught my eye. It was from my town. The news reporter was talking about a young girl who was brutally murdered in her own car. The girl was supposedly alone and her face was so horribly disfigured and her teeth were pulled out and her fingers were cut off and that the police have yet to identify her. I really got scared. How could this thing happen in my own small town? Nothing really happens around here. So I went on Netflix, but not before I double-checked every door and window in my house. That news report really got to me. But there's nothing like a romantic comedy to fix things, right? As the movie started, I really enjoyed it. It was about a guy who really got into this girl, but she was too high and mighty for him. He was from a bad part of town, and she was a posh princess with a lot of money. At halfway through the movie, I got another notification. It was from Snapchat, again. I didn't want to open it because I was at a really interesting part of the movie, so I didn't pick up my phone. After about two more minutes, I got another notification. And you know how it is. You have to see what you received. The curiosity is so, so strong when it comes to social media. I paused the movie and I picked up my phone. It was just as I expected. It was from the same guy and I saw that I received another two photos. The first one, from what I could tell, was of a house but it was still blurry and dark. I couldn't see what house it was, but the second photo caught my eye. It looked like it was of a person inside a home watching TV. It was blurry, so no details popped up, but there was something that did stand out to me. It was something that had a very specific green color. As I raised my eyes and looked next to my TV, I saw my green vase in which I had some flowers. I then analyzed the photo and saw that it was actually a photo of me. I freaked out. I then realized that the house was mine and the photo was of me. I got up, went to my window to see if anyone was there and then shut my blinds. I was scared. 
The next thing I knew, my upstairs window had been broken. The sound of glass shards falling on the floor startled me. I went upstairs to see what was going on, and all of a sudden, I felt a hand on my shoulder. I turned around, and it was a masked man. He hit me in the head, and I fell to the floor, but I didn't lose consciousness. Even though I started bleeding, I got up dizzy, and I started running, and he was right after me. I managed to get into a room and close the door. He was hitting the door with his foot, trying to knock it over, and at that moment, I had the idea of getting out of the house through the window. I opened the window, and I found myself on the roof. The guy came after me and he rushed towards me with a knife. Fortunately for me, he tripped on a loose tile and fell right off the roof. As I looked to the ground, I saw that the knife he had pierced his chest. In that moment, it hit me. This was the same guy Macy went out on a date with. I wanted to let out a loud scream, but nothing could come out of my mouth. I wanted to cry, but no tears. Suddenly, very suddenly, the world wasn't the same for me, ever. Let me tell you a story about what happened to me about two years ago. I was fresh out of high school and I had my entire life in front of me. Yeah, the future looked bright, but one decision changed my life forever. So as I was saying, I was out of high school and had pretty chill parents. I kept talking with them about my future and deciding what I wanted to do. My dad came up with the bright idea that I shouldn't rush into picking a college and see where life takes me. He suggested that I take a year off and get a job so I can get some real world experience. I thought about it a couple of days and finally, I came to the conclusion that it was the best thing for me. So after high school, I started looking for a job and before I knew it, I had my first interview and I was hired. It wasn't something glamorous, not even close to that. It was a job as a barista in a local coffee shop. The place was pretty unique, as it served coffee with different types of foam art in it. I eventually learned how to do some leaves and hearts. I wasn't particularly good at it, but let's get to the point of the story. A guy came in, and from the first moment I saw him, I had a crush. He was tall and had green eyes. Oh, and a smile to die for. Yeah, he was pretty much out of my league, but surprisingly, he was into me. At first, we didn't talk. We just looked at each other and smiled. As he started to come to the coffee shop almost every day, I learned what type of coffee he liked to drink. And while coming to the counter to make an order, I would already say it for him. The entire situation was cute. One day, he gathered the courage to ask me out, and in my mind, I was like, finally. We exchanged Snapchats, and later that evening, we met at a nice Chinese restaurant. I was so excited, and to be honest, I acted kind of dumb at first staring into his beautiful green eyes. But as he started talking, things got a little weird. He seemed angry for no reason, and his mood would fluctuate from being calm to being nervous and angry, all in a span of a couple of minutes. It was really unsettling. Also, he told me that he was into snakes and had one at home. I didn't really like that. Anyway, the day didn't go the way I pictured it in my head, and I decided not to see him again. I was polite, and I told the guy that it wasn't going to work out. He seemed fine at first, but I didn't know how he actually felt about it. Even though I told him that we don't have anything in common and it wasn't going to work, he continued to Snapchat me. He would send me weird selfies of himself with his snake and other things that would make my skin crawl. One time, he Snapchatted me a video of his snake eating a live little white mouse. I told him that it was disgusting and I don't want to see these kind of things, but he just laughed without acknowledging what I just told him. For about two or three weeks, the snap stopped. I was finally relieved that he forgot about me and I wouldn't have to be fearful each time I received a snap from someone, thinking that it was something from him. One day, as I was at my job, another cute guy came in. We hit it off right away and he seemed nice. Well, the other one seemed nice and look where that got me. So I was careful. I didn't accept to go out with him at first, but as we started talking and Snapchatting, I noticed that we really had a lot in common. He liked traveling, and I made sure that he didn't like snakes or having a snake for a pet. That was a green light for me to go out with him. So, one evening, we went to the movies. It was a comedy, and we laughed the whole way through. He had the cutest laugh. Anyway, after that, I invited him to come over to my place as I was living alone for some non-alcoholic drinks and he accepted. We got there, I went to the kitchen to prepare something, 
and then we sat on the couch and talked for about two hours. Sparks were flying through the air. We were really compatible. As I was touching his arm, I got a notification on my phone. I didn't want to ruin the moment, so I decided not to check it. But then I got two more, one after the other. All these scenarios popped into my mind, and thinking that it may be something important, I got up to see who it was. Horrified, I saw that it was the guy, Snapchatting me, again. I opened the messages and saw that he was telling me, in all caps, to get that guy out of the house. He wasn't good for me, and that I needed to get back with him. I told him that we were never together, and I was putting down my phone. I realized that he knew someone was in my house, so I asked him how did he find out, but he didn't reply. I was getting a bad feeling, so I wrote him another message asking him again. All of a sudden, my front door got kicked in. It was the guy, and he had a crazy look on his face. He also had a crowbar in his hand. I yelled, and the guy that I was on a date with got up from the couch, being confused. Without even looking at me, with his eyes fixated on my date, the weird guy attacked him. He started hitting him with the crowbar over the head, repeatedly until blood started spraying all over the living room. I was yelling and crying at the same time, without knowing what to do, but I quickly snapped out of the shock and I called 911. The guy continued beating him, beating him over and over. When the police came, he was still hitting him, but my date, my date was dead and had been for some time. His face was unrecognizable. The two police officers came, jumped the guy, and managed to put handcuffs on him. As they were taking him away, I looked at the dead body and couldn't believe that this happened. Then I glanced at the killer, and with his face covered in blood, with only his eyes showing, he smiled at me and said, you should have turned off your location services on Snapchat. (laughs) The police later told me that the guy was an engineer and a professional hacker. The good part is, it's been several years since the incident, and he's still in jail.